Hey, how's everyone doing? Jared here. Uh, so this is the GE62 7RE Apache Pro. The industry would call this an entry-level gaming laptop, but I look at it as more of a high-end entry-level gaming laptop, especially with a price point of around 1350 US. So let me explain. So the GE62's looks are pretty damn understated, but classy looking for a gaming laptop. The lid's brushed aluminum with a sweet backlit MSI logo, which helps give it that hint that this is still in fact a gaming laptop. And same thing with the keyboard deck, brushed aluminum, which looks sick. Now my only issue with it is that it shows finger and palm prints pretty hard, so keeping it looking new is gonna be an uphill battle. You were such a bitch to keep clean for the camera, weren't you? Yeah, you were. Shut up, yeah, you were. The underside is just plastic, but honestly, that doesn't bug me one bit. Uh, and the rear vents are also pretty understated too, which I really appreciate. Now, like a lot of laptops, the speakers are located on the front facing down, but still towards the user, so while playing music or watching videos while sitting on my lap, Sounds are of course muffled, but when sitting on a flat surface, you can really hear where MSI's partnership with DIN Audio and Naemic come in. And with the Naemic Audio Profile app, I was able to get the audio quality to sound much better than with its default settings out of the box. And if you're at all serious about your in-game audio, dude, this app is dope. Just rifle through the sound tracker feature and you'll be hearing and killing enemies before they even know what the hell's going on. That is with headphones on, of course. So for ports and IO on the left side, we're looking at a lock slot network port with killer gigabit LAN controller for better bandwidth management, which to me is like, Meh. Two USB 3.0 ports, HDMI and mini display ports, a USB-C port, which no, isn't Thunderbolt and doesn't have any special charging abilities, so. And then we've got mic and headphones ports. On the right, we've got the power port, an optical drive SD card slot, and a single old school USB 2.0 port, because why the hell not? The keyboard's pretty sick thanks to MSI's continuing partnership with SteelSeries, and because of that, we get a full RGB backlit keyboard, which can be adjusted in either MSI's Dragon Center app or the SteelSeries own app for button layout configuration. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with this keyboard though. Um, love because I think SteelSeries does a great job with making some keys larger for gaming, and the spacing, which seems to be just right for my finger length, allowing me to type pretty quickly and with confidence as well, but hate because the key switches are pretty darn soft. Like, it's almost silent with little to no tactility, but honestly, at the end of the day, tactility isn't going to help me get a higher score or or increased productivity. But it sure does add to the experience though, doesn't it? Now the trackpad on this guy is an interesting one. Uh, they decided to add that same brushed aluminum look, but unlike the lid and deck, the trackpad is textured. So while it feels cool scrolling up and down, side to side is an odd out of place feeling. So I wish they had just stuck with the traditional smooth trackpad instead. So the display on my review unit is a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS panel at 60 Hertz and color accuracy is actually pretty good. But taking it a step further, we've got several color profiles to pick from depending on your needs. And if you want, you can really dial in the exact amount of contrast or gamma and of course red, green and blues. So if you work with images a lot, like a graphics designer or photographer or video editor, you'll probably dig this feature. Now getting into the meat and potatoes, the GE62 is packing an Intel i7-7700HQ, an NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM expandable to 32, a Toshiba 128 gig M.2 SSD as its primary drive for the OS, and a one terabyte HGST mechanical hard drive at 7200 RPM for all your games, random files, and porn collection. So how does all that stack up in the real world? Well, playing my favorite games for the moment. With Overwatch on epic settings, I was getting a good 75 to 80 FPS on average, and with Battlefield 1, I was getting an average of about 55 FPS on high settings, and I think that's pretty good. I mean, start messing around with overclocking and we're sitting even prettier. Now, because it's got that partial aluminum build, you're gonna feel the deck getting warm under heavy load. Uh, the highest temps I experienced were around 83 degrees Celsius, but if you look at the top right corner, there's three buttons. The power button, the keyboard LED modes button, and then what I like to call the Harrier Jet Mode button because of how friggin' loud it makes the fans get. Shh, 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 it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, you're fine. But pressing this button will crank the GPU and CPU fan speed to max, bringing down what was once 83 degrees Celsius to the mid 60s. So it does work, which I was pleased to see considering Acer's iteration of enhanced cooling increases the noise, but doesn't do a lot to decrease temp. So 
Good work, MSI. Good work. So while the deck might get warm, the system is actually running adequately cool. Well, cool enough to not suffer from any thermal throttling annoyances. And what's neat is that you can actually play around with the fan noise slash cooling ability and the system's performance profile within MSI's Dragon Center app to find the right balance for you. Now on the topic of battery life, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's safe to assume that most folks who use gaming laptops while gaming will have AC power plugged in. But having said that, on battery while doing simple tasks, I was getting about two and a half to maybe three hours. But keeping in mind, that's at max display brightness. Drop that down to 50% brightness and we're probably looking at, I don't know, three and a half hours? But gaming while on battery, I only managed to squeeze out just 45 minutes or one good match on competitive mode in Overwatch as I quickly discovered, which is pretty terrible. Sorry, MSI. Calls it like a sees it. But overall, I really like this machine. I like the display. I like all the bells and whistles like the fan speed control. I love the Neemic audio app. I absolutely love the true color color management settings. And I like the keyboard regardless of my nitpicking. And performance is great. So would I recommend this to someone for around 1,350 US or 1,700 Canadian with all the bells and whistles? Sure, but at this price point, I'd probably tell them to make sure they do their research first. Anyways, I think that about does it for this one. Of course, I'll have a link for more info on the 2017 GE62 Apache Pro in the description below. Hopefully, you liked the video. If you did, as always, show me some love by hitting up that like button. And if you're new to my stuff, don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. But thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.